joined by Ben Stanford near this, the scene of this traumatic accident that interrupted your holiday weekend. Let's start by just going through that. You happen to be recording um, your wife, Rachel, out playing, and then uh, this happened. Just, just take us there. It, it happened so suddenly. It was, uh, everyone was having fun and it was great. And then she came up screaming and I thought it was from the cold initially. And uh, the second or third scream, I realized something was happening. I put down the phone. I was, I got up and I was approaching and my daughter noticed she thought mom had lost a tooth because blood was covering one of her teeth. And uh, so now I'm running and I'm thinking, I'm looking for a tooth at the end of this rope swing. And as I got closer, she kept saying, ow, and she had her hands up and she's doing this, but she's not grabbing her neck. She goes, ow, Ben, ow. And I got closer, I saw blood coming from several spots on her face, and then she said she hit her head. And I knew spinal trauma. So I immediately got behind her and put a C-spine on her. I immobilized her spine and we got close to the shore, but she couldn't make it, so she kind of went down on her knees about eight feet from shore in the wake, which wasn't good because she was moving. And uh, that's where she stayed for a minute or two. And then as people came and gathered to watch what was happening, I got a couple gentlemen that could come and help hoist her up. And then we, we slowly moved her with the, the neck immobilized onto shore. You've got enough first aid training yourself to know what to do. Yeah, I've had my first aid training since I was 18 off and on since then. But it's taken 16 years to come in super handy. And when it did, it really did. Later it gets confirmed that Rachel has a broken neck. Of course, everybody initially thinks, okay, what about uh, spinal cord uh, damage? Yeah, our mind races to the, to the worst case scenario. And there was a time on the beach there where, um, for whatever reason, we don't know whether it was the trauma or the injury, but she was completely immobilized. So my mind jumped to the worst for, for a short period of time. And then, then it came back and it came and went a couple of times in the emergency room. And you were saying that she's is feeling um, some nerve effects uh, down into one arm primarily? Yeah, absolutely. There's there's a bone fragment uh, causing that, and it's it's all right-sided numbness, burning, and weakness. You work as a care aide. You have six kids, so your plan, I take it, is to put work on hold, care for your wife, and uh, be there for your kids as well? Yeah, I just dropped my youngest off at school. I'm doing this interview. I've actually got to get back soon. Um, that's, it's just life is what it is, and the whole community has really stepped up and kind of wrapped themselves around us. And we've had offers from strangers to, to drive kids, to, to take care of them, to bring us food. We've had The whole community has been amazing. I'm absolutely humbled by this experience. This piece of equipment, you, you talk to people, you know, middle-aged people that played on this, or their kids did, you know, decades ago. Do you, do you look at that um, zip line, I guess, as to blame here, or is this just a freak accident? What, what are your thoughts? It seems like a one in a million, because I, I know I went off this every year many times as a kid, and, I, and my wife did the same thing, and, and it's, it just happened this time. And I guess it, it remains a bit of a mystery what she really hit her head on to cause that sort yeah. of impact and, and injury. It, it could have just been the wet sand compacting very quickly. It could have been a rock. It could have been debris coming from Mission Creek because there was debris floating down here. We, we don't know. We, yeah. She's pretty hard set on there was a rock or a boulder. We actually really want to go kind of just poke around out there and see if there's something there. At least just figure it out for yourselves. Yeah. But, you know, considering a, a traumatic, uh, you know, a broken neck, um, the situation that she's in now, um, you can, you can um, legitimately look at, the, at possibly a full recovery. There is potential for a full recovery. There's still the bone piece floating around in the, in the C6 area, um, impinging on the nerve. Could need surgery, and uh, but there's there's a prognosis of potential full recovery, or at least in the 90 percent. So we're really hoping. Right, there's some good news. Thanks for your time. Okay. Best Thank of luck. You. Thanks for watching Kelowna now.